Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about utter hopelessness. It is kind of part of the ego to really hang on to hope, to its future seeking really. Hope is this wanting something to happen, some future case to be. It is, it is betting on a better tomorrow. <laughs> That's what it is. And it is kind of one of the refuges of the ego to keep the ego going, that I will be better tomorrow. I will have it easier tomorrow, however, however you want to think about it or put it. It may be worth investigating and delving into this to see if it's within you as well because it is possible it is possible to let it go now the mind the ego in particular if you suggest we well, should let go of hope you should be utterly hopeless that sounds horrible they're like how could you live without hope <laughs> it's part of part of the the uh, Western, if not American, culture that I'm familiar with. Is there's this? Oh, everybody has to have hope. Hope is something we must grasp onto. We have to always have hope. That's what you hear over and over and over again in this culture. But that is not the case. It is possible to live in perfect contentment, deep peace with what is now, as it is. To not need the now to be better than it is. <laughs> to, you don't have to have some wish, want, longing for some something to happen. Some future state will be different than this. It, this also reminds me a bit of uh, some of Alan Watts's lectures. I love Alan Watts's lectures, and I've got uh, a whole series of them on on Audible that I listen to from time to time. And I remember in one of his talks, he talked about speaking with a German psychologist, and this was uh, after World War II. And the German psychologist said much of his work was around uh, helping those that had an awakening, or at least a moment. It might have been passing, but there was a moment of satori or, or awakening. Maybe it's, sometimes it was permanent. They didn't go into those kind of details. But what happened was is they were trying to come to terms, you know, because you know there'll be a, there'll be a, like a story of. Uh, you know, somebody was on the battlefield and, you know, the, the, the buzz bombs, you can hear them above you. And so, you know, you'd be on the battlefield and you hear one right above you and it's getting louder and louder. And it's like, you know, it's hitting you. <laughs> and there's this moment where you give up. There's this surrender. Basically, you give up the hope of getting out of this alive. You're in this horrible situation and you give up. You're like, there is no future. This bomb's over me, it's imminent, I am done. And in that moment, there's this, there, there's sometimes, some people experience this clarity as things fall into place and there's this deep peace. And as sometimes is the case, the bomb was a dud and didn't go off. And, you know, then they come home and they speak with uh, friends, relatives, and they're like, well, it was a moment of, of, of you know, extreme uh, stress and you just imagine this. And so this German psychologist goes, no, and he was trying to point out that this isn't, isn't an imagination. This is a, you know, this is a different viewpoint, you know, and, uh, and so, 
but the thing is, is in the story, it's it's this utter hopelessness. I'm not getting out of this alive. <laughs> this bomb's gonna hit me. And there'd be some similar stories of uh, people in, in concentration camps. And sometimes they they've been there, you know, long enough where they give up the hope of ever getting out. And then suddenly there's this feeling of of freedom, liberation hits. And so, not to say that you need these extreme scenarios to <laughs> give up hope, but it's possible to just, in the moment, delve into the truth that the future is not better. <laughs> the future is not where it's all going to make sense. The future is not where, you know, this is, you know, basically, if you're always looking to the future, you're never looking to the now. What utter hopelessness does is it totally cuts off looking to the future. You're no longer looking to the future in any way. The future is not better in any way. You've, you've, you've given it up. <laughs> and in that way, you're finally able to come into deep presence. There's a deep presence that can arise when you give up utterly the future. <laughs> and in order to utterly give up the future, you have to give up hope. And after awakening, after enlightenment, I would, I would say there's no future expectation. There's no hope. There's, you're, you're, never, you're not living life for some hope anymore. The, the reason that you do things is, you know, it's a, life is play. It's for the experience. You're doing what you can. But you don't have this hope that you'll have it in the future. That just doesn't arise. There's no, there's no hope of life will be better. I'll have success. Uh, you know, this will happen. This great thing will happen, and all will be well with the world in the future. That is gone. There's no hope in that way. Instead, it's all about now. The now is all I need. I don't need to look at the future at all. The now is where it's at. <laughs> and that's what happens after awakening enlightenment is all the focus is on now. And that the now is perfectly fine as it is now. There's this peace and contentment with what is as it is. And so there isn't this underlying hope for it to be different. Again, not that you can't make changes. I mean, it might be part of the play that, you know, you see some injustice in the world or whatever. And so you might join a march or donate money or you might do something to impact some change. That's perfectly fine. You may, there may be the action for change, but there's no hope for the change. You're not expecting the change. You're just making the action and letting it ripple out in the world. Chips fall as they may. And in that way, there's, there's no future attached to the action. You're acting now. The future will take care of itself. The, mo the moment is what matters. What, what am I doing now? And not that this is bad, should not be. It's not like that kind of thing where you're trying to fix it because you're, it needs to be, you know, resisted and, or conquered or otherwise gotten rid of. It's more of cooperative of anything. You're working with the world. This is what I can do that potentially may make changes. And the world will change or not change, but there's no hope that it changes. <laughs> and this is sometimes hard for the the ego, the the conceptual mind to grasp. You know, why would you act without hoping for 
the the end results and this is the whole crux is is you know they talk about karma being action and the fruits of action and karma yoga one of the practices is to give up the fruits of action you act without expecting any of the fruits of action and so you act but you don't expect any of the fruits. You don't even expect fruits to happen. You just act. That's it. <laughs> and an egocentric uh, mental conceptual mind can't grasp this because the ego wants the carrot and the stick for motivation. I, I need, I need a, a motivation. I need the whip or I need the carrot. One or the other. Otherwise, I don't want to do anything. But that's the ego. The, the, you know, liberated one, the Yanni, doesn't need the carrot or the stick to act. There is just action. Play, you could call it. It's just play. You act to act. And the results of which do not matter. So it's a different way of, of, I guess, viewing the world. Because I think delving into hopelessness prior to awakening enlightenment, delving into, you know, your own investment in the future. I'm going to get this later. Things can be so, so much better later. Giving all that up can be very advantageous in that if you totally give all that up, you can really focus on the now, where it's at. The, you know, the, the, the realization, the revelation of enlightenment can only happen now. It's not in the future. And the now is, is not, you know, the revelation, the, the, you know, insight doesn't depend on some future thing happening. Everything can happen now. Whether it happens now or not is un not under your control. But it can happen now. But I will say that as long as you're distracted by thoughts, by past, by future, it makes it less likely that you're going to notice now. And it's all about now, being so now that all the focus is here is the most conducive for revelation and enlightenment. So delving into giving up the, the, the hope for the future could help. Also may, di may diminish the ego because so much of the ego is strengthened by hope and trying to hold on. But I know that it may, to do so may require some additional delving into an inquiry because, like I said, the, the deeper conditioning, especially in the culture in the U.S., is we got to have hope. <laughs> we put such high importance on hope. You have to overcome all that conditioning and reinforcement by others and, uh, you know, peers and everything else. And I'm sure I'll probably get comments on this video about how can you give up hope. I'm sure somebody will, will be so attached to hope that they'll have to mention this, that you can't give up hope. But uh, after enlightenment, the you'll find that hope really isn't an aspect of life. You're not really hoping for anything. There's no such expectation. Things don't have to be other than what they are. You just act to act. No more, no less. And so you might want to delve into hopelessness. And initially, it may seem uncomfortable because we put so much value and things are attached to the idea of hope. It's almost like a drug. We, it feels good to have it. <laughs> but coming off of it, there's some DTs perhaps. And it's like, uh, it doesn't feel so good. Coming off of hope. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> perhaps for the egoic mind, but play with this. Can you let go of the hope for something to happen, for some future state to occur? 
Can you cease betting on the future entirely? And see what happens. Anyways, if you got any questions, comments, please post below. And as always, thank you much.